Hello. Um, these these notes are going to be about uh, basically objects colliding, and uh, so please imagine you have two objects. They could be the same mass. They could be different masses. And in the beginning, before they collide, moving towards each other. So this guy's moving this way. This guy's moving this way. Okay? And then after, we'll call them object, um, object A, object B, or object 1. Let's, let's call this object 1. And this object 2. And this is before collision. Okay? And then... And I just copy this over, group them. There we go. And I'll clone it. And I will ungroup it. There we go. And this isn't before the collision anymore. This is going to be after the collision on the right. So I'll make this after. And I'll switch my arrows. I'll move that one over there, and I'll move this one over there. Okay. These arrows simply represent velocity. This is velocity of object one. This is velocity of object two. After the collision, this is velocity of object one, and this is velocity of object two. Okay. Um. So it's important to realize that. Any outside forces, that is, any force on object one that is not from object two, we aren't talking about here. We're just ignoring it. So what I'm going to derive assumes there are no outside forces or no external forces. So I should probably write that out. Um, no outside forces. People sometimes say external forces. Besides the force of object one on object two. And as you know, that is exactly going to equal except it will be in the opposite direction as the force of object 2 on object 1. Okay? So this is an example where third law, otherwise known as law of interaction, would indeed apply. Alright, so now, where do we go from here? Well, we're talking about the forces on object 2, so object 2, as a result of this force on object 2, mass 2 will have an acceleration. This is the acceleration of object 2, correct? So, I'm just using second law. Uh, sum of forces equals ma. So I'm going to replace, replace both of these with ma. And of course on the right we have the force on object 1, so object 1 is the one that will accelerate as a result of that force. Object 2 accelerates as a result of the force due to object one. So what are we going to do next? Um, by definition of acceleration, right? Definition of acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. Now let's apply that here. Um, what we have is m two 
change in velocity for object 2 divided by change in time for object 2. And that should equal m1 negative, don't forget my negative, m1 change in velocity for object 1 over change in time. Now, both objects collide for the same delta t. So we can leave that out of our equation because it will cancel out. You simply multiply both sides by delta t and it's gone. Okay? So when the dust settles, we have m2 delta v2 has to equal negative m1 delta v1, okay? I'll just write same delta t, both objects over here, all right? Um, hmm. And you should be able to recall that definition of change in velocity, where the change in velocity is going to be do v final minus v initial, okay? So we have m2, and then I'm going to say v final, that's a vector. For object 2, be careful, we have to keep track of our objects, minus initial velocity, object 2, notice the subscripts, has to equal negative m1, um, let's see here, v final, object 1, minus v initial, object 1, right? Cool. Now, um, let's distribute Distribute M1 and M2. So we have M2, V final object 2, minus M2, V initial object 2, has to equal negative M1, V final object one plus because I have a minus and a minus m1 v initial object one okay cool let's rearrange things so they look cute um, so I'll just call this rearrange terms Um, I'm going to move, let's see, I'm going to make it M2, V final, object 2, plus, if I add this to both sides, the equation, I'll have M1, V final, object 1, and that's going to equal, so, this one I'm going to move to the other side as well, because it's negative. Um, M2, V initial, object 2, plus, and I'll leave that one there, M1, V initial, object 1, okay? Interesting. I got M times v, mass times velocity. So velocity is a vector, mass is a scalar, so 
the, each one of these terms is scaling the velocity by the mass. So the mass is scaling the velocity vector. The mass is making the velocity vector bigger or smaller. And I notice that on the left side, I have final velocity object 2 and object 1 scaled by m1 and m2. And on the other side of the equation, the right side of the equation, I have the velocity initial for both objects scaled by the mass. Um, so there's a definition I should introduce right here, which will make sense. Definition of, and I'm going to call this, this is a new word called momentum. Okay, and the symbol is P, the units are uh, the units of mass, which is kg times meter per second. So momentum is equal to velocity vector scaled by mass, okay? So this right here is final momentum of object two this year second term is final momentum of object one this one here is going to be initial momentum because that's my initial velocity there so initial when I say initial and final, I'm talking about before and after collision, okay? So this is initial momentum of object two. And this is initial momentum of object one, all right? And looking at these two, this is the total momentum of all my objects by the way, you could have more than two objects and this equation is going to have the same form. Total momentum of all of all my objects before the collision. No, that's after the collision. Sorry. After the collision. And this one here is the total momentum of all objects before the collision. And we could write this simply as P final equals P initial and we are assuming no external forces on our objects P 
during a collision. Okay, and this is known as law of conservation of momentum. Okay, and it's one of the great conservation laws in physics. Um, you should now probably, uh, it'd be a great time for you to try the momentum worksheets I've posted on the website. I'll just show you those right now. Okay. Um, go to your website real quick. And I will click on momentum. And yeah, there they are right there. If you have time, go ahead and try the tippers. We'll, we'll be doing those next. Um, I have some more notes. Those notes posted there are the same thing you, you just saw. And I'll also post, post the notes that you just saw on the smart board. Um, but you should definitely try. Um, you should definitely do these three pages uh, as soon as possible. And I hope you have a good day. Uh, thank you for watching.